Hallelujah. Good morning, Lifeway. How are you today? So glad to see everybody after Thanksgiving. And I can, it looks like I see more of you. <laughs> I see more of you. If you ate turkey and you know it, clap your hands. If you had ham, clap your hands. Anybody has some greens? Yeah, and cakes and pies. Oh, my, my. <laughs> Woo. We give God glory and honor for allowing us to see another Thanksgiving. Because truly, we have a lot to be thankful for. Our lives, the health that it gives us, the strength in our bodies, sound minds. So we just honor the Lord. Father God, we come to you today, God, thankful. Thankful that you bless us beyond measure. Thankful that you love us beyond measure. Thankful that you keep us, God. When sometimes we, we don't, we don't want to be kept. You love us when sometimes we don't do loving things. And you're an awesome and amazing God. So today, God, as always, we say, have your way. Move how you want to move. Do what you want to do. And we'll be so kind to give you the glory. To give you the glory. To give you the glory. For it is in the name of Jesus we pray. We thank you that you love us, and that love is unconditional. That love is crazy. That love is crazy. The love you have for us is crazy. How many of you believe that God loves us? He loves us in a crazy way. Woo, thank you for your crazy love, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Never, I could never 
Stop chasing you down Come on While you're still waiting Love is never gonna let you miss out
trust God to, to just take him at his word and this special time right now is offering time you can bring your seed down to the altar this time and believe God that he's going to do that thing that, that you need that open that door in some cases close that door it's offering time. Bring your love offering. Bring your tithe and your offering. Thank you. 
keep it right there. I will walk, I won't, I won't walk, I will walk, I will walk by. Father, I just ask that this day that you would release supernatural eyesight into the lives of your people. That, Father, Lord, on this day, that, Lord, they would choose to walk by faith and not by sight. That they would not allow the natural realm any longer to control them. They would not allow their natural mind to manipulate them. But, Father, I ask God, just like you spoke to John the Revelator, which you told him to come up higher, and that you would show him mysteries he knew not of. Holy Spirit, we release you to be able to move in and out of these aisles, up and down these roads, to touch those that are watching online. Father, Lord, cause them to see from heaven's perspective. May they recognize, God, that you're for them and not against them. May they recognize, Father Lord, that it is you from the foundation of the world that, Father, established their coming and their going. That, Father, your perfect will, your perfect plan, Father Lord, is still on the table. And that, God, that you're moving mightily on their behalf. So, Holy Spirit of God, cause us to come up higher. Come up higher in Jesus' name. You sing it, I will. Come on. Come on. Who will you trust? Sometimes we have to encourage the, the people that, that we are around. You never know what somebody else is going through. You know what I mean? 
So can we do something? Yeah. I mean, it's after Thanksgiving. I want this side to turn and face that side. And I want you to face them back. I want you to find somebody, make eye contact with them. Find somebody. And let them know that you are the person that they're looking at. Give them a good smile. A point to them. When you got your person, say, I got them. smile mouth the words to you to them I love you mouth again say God loves you we're gonna sing it again but change places with that person in mind and heart and in spirit Maybe they're saying the words, but they're not really meaning what they're saying. So you're going to sing it for them, through them, to them. in your sights sing it again your hands. Lift your hands in this house and say,
his house today and say hallelujah 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 trust in God There's something about this song right here. You can get going in it and, 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 and never stop. Yeah. It gets deep and it gets in there. Because I'm telling you, I believe some people are going through some things in here this morning. Yeah. And you got to do one thing. One thing. Just trust. Trust. Come on. Trust. Trust. Never let go and Trust. 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 Count on Jesus and trust. 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 And trust. 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 Trust God for your healing today. Somebody's getting healed right now in the name of Jesus. If that's the person you were looking at, begin to praise God with them. Somebody's getting set free right now in the name of Jesus. Yep, yep, yep. It's going down. It's going down. He's in the room. 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 Ooh, just can't let it go. I will walk by faith. I will walk by sight. I will walk by faith. I will walk by sight. I dare you to sing it again and mean it. Mean it. Mean it. Mean it. Trust. Say it again. Sometimes we give it and try to take it back, but I will. I won't. I won't walk by I will. I will walk by faith. I won't walk by faith. Hey. I trust in God. I trust in God. I trust in God. Oh, he loves us. Come on. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Yeah. Make it personal. He loves me. He loves me. Oh, he loves me. Oh, he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, he Listen, I believe some people are being delivered right now. I will walk by faith, not by sight. I believe some of you, under the sound of my voice, you've been dealing with some things. Fear has gripped your heart. Anxiety has gripped your soul. And the spirit of deliverance is here in this building today. I believe God wants to set you free from that thing. 
that thing that holds you back, how many of you can overthink a thing? You know, Solomon in all of his wisdom said, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. You know, when you choose to make a declaration and you begin to say, God, I trust in you. My Savior, the one who has never failed and never will fail. When you begin to make that declaration, then all of a sudden what happens from the words of your mouth and the meditations of your heart, your atmosphere begins to change. And all of a sudden your mind begins to connect with your heart. That's why Solomon said, trust God with all your heart. Because when you trust Him with your heart, you disconnect from your brain the what ifs, the, the what maybes, or, or maybe this thing that's going to be able to come upon me. But I'm here to be able to tell you that supernatural faith is in this room. Johnny, I want to sing through that again. There's an anointing on that today. And I want you to take whatever that thing is that has captivated your mind, that has encapsulated you, that has got you to be able to believe that this is your new normal. I'm just telling you it's not. I'm telling you the healer is in the house. I'm telling you the one that has come to set you free wants to see you walk out of here in freedom. Come on, let's worship. I'm going to say this. Fear is not my future. You are sickness is not my story. Yeah. You are heartbreaks, not my home. You, are. you will never fail. Yes, sir. Come on, sing it with me. Fear is not my future. You are sickness is not my story. You are heartbreaks, not my home. You will never fail.
your hands together. He's the object of our worship. He's the reason why we've assembled here today. Father, we love you today. Father, we thank you for your handiwork in the lives of these, your people. That, Father, it was you that formed and fashioned them. It was you that saw them from the beginning of time. And, Father, Lord, you have 
created them even in their mother's womb. And Father, when you finished, you said, mm, 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 they sure look good. Father, I ask God that you would just completely envelop them today. May they understand that the best, Father, is still out in front. Because you're the one that holds their future. And no man can snatch them from the palm of your hand. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. So listen, if you follow us on social media, you can go back every day this week and you can re-listen to that worship. I'm just telling you, there was a very strong anointing on that worship this morning. I'm, I'm talking about a yoke-destroying, burden-lifting anointing that's on it. And there's something about choosing to start your day off every day in worship. It's there. And if you don't have a social media account, you can follow us also on YouTube. That will be uploaded later on today. And it's just very, very important. Because you know what? God wants us to understand the greatness of who we are in him. Well, how many of you know sometimes when we go through situations, we can't see God in the midst of our situations? You know, I'm reminded of in the book of Esther, you know, there's no mention of God's name in the book of Esther. As a matter of fact, they call it the godless book because there's no mention of his name in there, but he's all in there. You know, he's working behind the scenes even though they're not acknowledging, acknowledging him in the scenes. And it's important for us to understand that sometimes we walk through seasons of our life where we can't track him but we have to be able to trust him. That's why it's important to be able to say, I walk by faith and not by sight. I choose to set my eyes upon him, the author and the finisher of my faith, and I choose to trust his plan over my plan. And there's something about walking in faith that will completely change everything for you. You know, here we're moving into the Advent season, and one of the beautiful things about the Advent season is that, you know, we have these beautiful Christmas trees. But you know, what we don't understand is that where Christmas trees come from, well, not necessarily Christmas trees, but where lights come from, because there's a passage inside of God, John's gospel where it talks about the Feast of Dedication, which is also the Festival of Lights. There's only one account inside of the scripture that talks about the Festival of Lights. It's not an Old Testament passage. It's only here in John's gospel. Let me read it to you. And it says, now it was the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem, and it was winter. It was cold. And Jesus walked into the temple in Solomon's porch, and the Jews surrounded him and said to him, How long will you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. Turn to your neighbor and say, He may be talking to you right now. I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you do not believe, because you are not of my sheep. As I have said, my sheep hear my voice, and they do not follow the voice of a stranger. So here the, fe the Feast of, 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 of Dedication or the Feast of Lights is, is not an Old Testament passage. It actually happened in a very dark period inside of, of, of the, um, the historicity of Christendom. You know, from the closing out of Malachi to the beginning of Matthew, it's, it's known as the 400 dark years. It's known as the, the intertestamental period, which is between the testaments. And what's amazing is that during that period, it seemed like God was silent. But how many of you know that when we think God is silent, God is never silent? As a matter of fact, he's always working, even at times when we can't identify that he's working. I, I don't know about you, but one of the things that I recognize about God is that sometimes God enables us to go through seasons for the purpose of our root systems going deeper. I, I don't know about you, but I would love to be able to have him serve it up on a silver platter every single day to be able to say, this is all you're going to need today. This is all the money you're going to need today. This is all the healing that you're going to need today. That everything that you need is right here. I would love for him to come to my front door every morning about 6 a.m. and knock on the door and serve it up on a silver platter. But that's not Christendom. Because you see, our Heavenly Father, just like in the natural realm, how many of you all have children? How many of you all birthed those children with the intent that those children would stay at your home for the rest of your life? No, no, no. Your intent was to be able to, to, to put into them to be able to raise them in the way they should go. Now, some of your kids are, are blown away right now because they saw you raise your hands, and they're thinking, golly, I'm staying at Mama's house, and I'm about 45, and now they saw you lift your hands, so they know they need to be able to go get them a J-O-B and to be able to make plans for the days ahead. But, you know, just like our Heavenly Father, he doesn't want us to be able to stay an infant. He doesn't want us to be able to stay a child. He wants us to grow in faith. And in the process of faith, just like David, who said in Psalms 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Because sometimes life will take you through valleys. Sometimes life will take you to mountaintops. And what's important is that regardless if we can see the hand of God, we have to learn to trust the hand of God. So Hanukkah is all about, oh, 
the Feast of Dedication in the, in the Festival of Lights is also celebrated as Hanukkah. As a matter of fact, it was a, 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 a festival that was birthed through those 400 years of silence. And what Hanukkah was, it was a remembrance. So here we see that Jesus, he's in the temple. It's the winter time. It's during the Feast of Dedication. He's celebrating the hand of God. How many of you know that sometimes when we can't track him, he's still working? And so as a result, what it does is it causes our roots to trust him even the more. And so what took place during those 400 years, it was a very dark time. It was a time where the Greeks were overthrowing the land. As a matter of fact, that they had completely overtaken the temples. They had taken the synagogues. And they had chosen to be able to make sacrifice inside of those synagogues, which was completely ungodly. So at one of the darkest times, and how many of you know that the rabbis were the ones that kind of ushered them in? You know, those religious folks. You know, they're, they're the ones that are always mess things up. Turn your neighbor and say, don't be religious. And religious folks will mess it up every time. So here all of a sudden they usher them in and, and they are allowing them to be able to make sacrifices. But there's a group that always raises up to be able to say, no, I'm putting God first. And so during that 400 period of time, and I'm not preaching on this today, but, but there is an a, a intertestamental um, a point to where they begin to raise up. And there's, there's a, a Maccabean family, Judas Maccabee, and, um, and, and, and here all of a sudden he's choosing to be able to stand up against the wickedness that's happening inside of the temple. And as a result, God causes them to be able to, to, to be victorious over the Greeks. And how many of you know that the Greeks were a mighty empire? Have you ever heard of Alexander the Great? Yeah, he was Greek. And, and, and as a result, he, he, when he passed away, he turned it over to four different generals. One of them was Antiochus Epiphanes. And when he turned it over to them, you know, they wanted all of the land to be able to worship the gods of the Greeks. And they wanted them to be able to worship Zeus and, and to be able to worship all these Greek gods. If you ever go with me to Israel, we'll take you up to Caesarea Philippi. And they also worshiped a Greek god there called Pan. And he was half goat, half man. You know, he was one of them crazy looking um, creatures. And, and they believed that if you didn't worship him, that at night he would come and terrorize you, which gives way to our English word panic. You know what's amazing is that I was telling somebody earlier today that the, the, the enemy doesn't um, ever die. Um, evil spirits don't ever die. They, they go through an extreme makeover, and they come into a, a, a future generation, and they use different tactics. What we see today that a lot of people are stricken by fear, by panic, anxiety over the, the what ifs. And so we see during the during time of Jesus that all of a sudden it was the very same thing. So here we, we turn, and, and here the Greeks, they come in. They hear that there is this um, um, militia. The, the Maccabeans, and, and they're using guerrilla warfare to be able to overthrow the Greeks. And, and so all of a sudden, they send an army in, and, and guess what? God gave them a victory. Then they send another army in, and God gave them a victory. Then they brought 40,000 soldiers in. Y'all ever seen that movie, 300? Remember the big elephants? Yeah, they came into the land with the elephants as well to be able to completely squash them and to stop this uprising. So you had those that were hiding in the caves using guerrilla warfare, and they completely overthrew the Greeks. So here you, you turn, and they, they, they get their, their temple back, and, and they go into the temple, and, and it's a season of miraculous move of God. And so what takes place, they go in, and they, they find the golden menorah, and the golden menorah has to be lit, and the golden menorah doesn't have enough pure olive oil to be able to light it. As a matter of fact, they got one cruise. Turn your neighbor and say, one cruise. One cruise will last for one day, but they need it to be able to last for eight days because that's how long it takes to be able to make this pure olive oil. And so they, they, they turn and say, what do we do? We don't have enough oil to be able to light it and in order for us to be able to go and make it because it'll burn out. They said, but God will provide. Jehovah Jireh. See, somebody today had to be able to trust Jehovah Jireh. Somebody today is walking through something, didn't matter what it is, and you're having to trust him to be able to show himself strong on your behalf. So they filled the, the oil lamps with the, with the one cruise that they had, and they lit the, the, the menorah, and they started to be able to make the sacred olive oil. After one day, the oil was still burning. After two days, the golden menorah was still burning. After three days, it was still burning. All the way to eight days, God supernaturally provided everything that they needed during that time. You see, there's things that we can look at. There's things that we can, we can rationalize inside of our minds. I, I don't know about you, but sometimes this preacher here struggles with paralysis of analysis. Sometimes I analyze things a little bit too much. Anybody, do I got anybody else with me? Or do I got all holy people here today? Yeah, that's what I thought. So, so at times what happens, we begin to analyze situations, and we're wondering what's happening, and how is this thing going to ever work out? 
Well, I'm here to tell you that I've been walking with God now for, for about 35 years and in the process of, of, of 38 years, thank you, Lord. And, if, and for the process of, of, of walking with him, you know what I've had to learn? That at times I've got to be able to get five feet out on a four-foot limb. I've got to be able to trust him even when I can't track him. I've got to be able to say, God, I know that you're moving even though I can't see your hand. I, I've got to be able to allow you to be able to show yourself strong. Friday, I, I turned and I promised my mother when she got home from rehab, some of you have been tracking with me and I appreciate all your prayers for the last 30 days. My mom's been in the hospital. She was getting ready to knock on heaven's door. I think at one point she was, you know, ha had one foot in heaven, one foot on earth. My father passed away in 2007 and she told me that my daddy was chasing her. How, how many of you know that, that she was close to heaven? And, 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 and I told her, I said, Mama, you were hallucinating. She said, I knew I was, but it, just, it, just, it was just so wonderful, you know, having him chase me. And, and, you know, and, and, and all of a sudden, we began to pray, you began to pray, and, and you know what, and God pulled her back, and she went to rehab, and, and I told her, I said, you know, Mama, they can keep you here for 21 days. I said, but if you'll do the work, you can be out maybe by Thanksgiving. And she got out the day after Thanksgiving, and she did the work. And, you know, what's so beautiful is I turned, and I, and I, I took her home, and, and I promised her, I said, when you get home, your little dog will get home. You know, I had her little dog at my house. I got two dogs. Now I had her dog, and so I had three dogs, and I got a wife, and all five of us were in the bed at night. How many of you know that wasn't happy? As a matter of fact, I, I saw my wife the hap. Mama, are you watching? I saw my wife the happiest when I got in the car on Friday to be able to take that little puppy home. Because she knew she was going to get her bed back. Because that dog just loved to be able to snuggle real close to you. But we got to be able to understand that sometimes we don't understand what's happening. And, and, you know, even in the midst of what my mom walked through, there was great peace that she had in the midst of that struggle, in the midst of that journey. And I'm here to tell you that if you'll allow God to be able to supernaturally build your faith, you may walk through a dark season. You may be like the Maccabeans to where all of a sudden they said, you know what, if we die, we die. But we're not going to sit here and stop worshiping our God. We're not going to allow these Greek gods to come in here. We're not going to allow this government to completely change us and to be able to stop us from doing what we know we've been called to do, and that's worship God. And so all of a sudden, you know, they, they chose to trust him, and as a result, he showed himself strong on their behalf. You know, what I love is that, is that here, you know, we, we turn and we see that the Greeks, they wanted a one-world government. They wanted a one-world system. They wanted to be able to literally dictate how all the world would worship. But all we had was a remnant. Turn to your neighbor and said, all it takes is a remnant. It took a remnant, and all of a sudden, God brought supernatural deliverance. God chose to be able to deliver them because they chose to be able to trust God. Now, these songs that they sung this morning, I didn't tell them to be able to sing these songs, but they got me all messed up. I don't even know if I can even preach this message because i got so much other stuff that's stirring up on the inside of me right now. But it's important for us to understand that, you know what, when we choose and we, we engage the one who truly loves us, when we understand that his love will never fail, when we understand that he is faithful and true, that when he stepped out onto the edge of nothing, he said, let there be that you were on his mind. How many of you know he told Jeremiah that he called him to be a prophet to the nations from his mother's womb? And you need to understand something, that God's got a purpose and a plan for each and every one of our lives, but the enemy of our soul wants us to get so caught up in the what ifs. He wants to get us so caught up in the, in, in the doldrums of the possibility that this thing is going to be able to you're going to be able to implode. But I'm here to tell you that our God is greater. I'm here to tell you that what he wants to be able to do is so much greater than what we can begin to understand. So he, he showed supernatural deliverance. He also showed that supernatural provision with that olive oil. You see, we have to be able to recognize that our God is more than enough. He is more than enough. And, you know, he'll always allow us to get to a place to where we feel like we have a valley experience. But in that valley, you know what he's doing? He's causing our root systems to go deeper. He's causing us to be able to trust him. He's causing us to be able to look to him. He's causing us to be dependent upon him because that's his ultimate goal because he wants us to grow up. He doesn't want us to be needy all the time. He doesn't want us to be able to, to be like our, our children and our grandchildren that, that always want to come to us and they're asking for something. They're asking for something. But at some given point, he wants us to be able to realize that, hey, all that Pops has, all that Daddy has is already yours. You see, when my boys now that are grown men, when they come into the house, they don't ask, hey, Dad, can I go to the refrigerator and get something to drink? They just walk in and they help themselves. Because they realize whatever Pops got in that refrigerator, whatever Dad's got in that refrigerator is, his, is theirs. And you know what's amazing is that I believe that there's a place that we come to in our relationship with God where all of a sudden we begin to recognize that. We don't have to beg and grovel. We don't have to be able to plead. We, we come to a place where we realize that his promises are yes and amen. You know, there's two things that God can never do. 
Number one, he can never lie. God will never lie. And the second thing that God can't do is he'll never violate his word. What he has written is faithful and true. What he has written, he will always promise and he will always provide. So when you read it, it's not just some fluffy promise in the future. You can bank on it. You can take that thing to the bank. You can choose to be able to say that my God said this. As a result, I believe it. And because I believe it, he's going to show himself strong and show himself faithful. But, you know, we've got to be able to be people of the word. We've got to be able to know the word. How many of you know that the word will set you free? Bible says that you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Does truth set you free? Look at, look at this congregation is smart. <laughs> you know that if I ask a question, you ain't going to be able to respond. Because if you respond, you already know that most likely your response may be different than what my answer is. So you're just going to wait for me to give you the answer. <laughs> you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Truth doesn't set you free. It's the truth that you know. It's what you stand upon. It's what you believe. It's, what, it's the foundation of your life. It's what you choose to allow to get on the inside of you. And as a, as a result, you choose to be able to stand upon truth. You choose to be able to say, God, you're a God that would never lie. It doesn't matter what happens on the outside. I know what you have said on the inside. It doesn't matter that, that, that this thing doesn't quite look, out, look like it's going to happen the way that I thought it's going to happen. But how many of you realize that your life has never happened the way that you thought it was going to happen? I don't know about you, but I remember when I was 18 years old, boy, I had the tiger by the tail, and, I, and you know, I had my future set ahead of me. And I knew by the time I was 30, I was going to be a millionaire. And by the time I was 35, I was going to be able to retire someplace in the, in the Caribbean, and I was going to have my house right there on the beach, and it was all going to be beautiful. Yep, it still is beautiful. Because his ways are not my ways. And so when I was 21 years old, I came to an altar and I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what I did? I surrendered myself to his plan. I chose to be able to say, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. As a result, I chose to be able to say, God, this is my course of action, but I no longer want to be the one in charge. I want to be able to submit to the one that's in charge. I want to allow you, Father, Lord, at times where, where I, I may not understand what you're doing, I want to choose to be able to trust you. I want to choose to set my eyes upon you. I want to choose to be able to allow my faith to be able to be strong because of your master plan for my life. And I can honestly tell you this today. I am more fulfilled than that millionaire version of me that's living in a house on the, in the Caribbean, on the beach. Because how many of you know it's lonely in an island all by yourself? But as a result, I got you. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's got us. There's nothing like doing life together. There's nothing like having people that are sharpening you, strengthening you. And you know what I love is that we got such a phenomenal congregation. Phenomenal congregation. Those of you that are, that are watching online that have never been here, you're missing out. Because you enjoyed this today, but I'm just telling you, it's ten times better live. But we have phenomenal congregation because we got great people. We have people that, that are so unique because our Heavenly Father is the one that formed and fashioned you. You know what I realize is that together something beautiful is formed. And when we choose to be able to honor one another, we choose to acknowledge the uniqueness about one another, all of a sudden something great happens. You know, I tell people all the time that I don't have to be the smartest guy in the room. I just need to know who is. And that's the one that I connect with. You know, there's a lot of projects that, that I could do around the house. How many of you wives have had your husband do around the pro some projects around the house? Then all of a sudden you had to be able to call a professional. There's some things I just recognize it's beyond my skill set. And so right before I even get into a mess, I'm going to be able to make a phone call. But, you know, together we all possess um, skills. We all possess, um, possess gifts that our Heavenly Father has given us. And it's important for us to be able to recognize that he will provide one of the things that I love about provision, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, is trust him with all of your heart. You see, trusting God with all of our heart aligns ourselves with the Lord. When we trust him with our heart and we don't lean upon our own understandings, we align ourselves with him. How many of you know that his ways are greater than our ways? So I want to set you up this morning. Turn to your neighbor and say, his plan is better than your plan. You know, one of the things that, that we have to understand, a part of his plan, is that how many of you know that, that God doesn't want just a portion of you? He wants all of you. He's never satisfied with just a, a condensed version of, of, of Pastor Eli. As a matter of fact, he wants my whole heart. And I don't know about you, but every single day he's constantly speaking to me. I dream every night. 
And I wake up in the morning, and it's amazing. I'll, I'll, you know, when my alarm goes off, because I can sleep now. I, I'm not one of these that only get three or four hours of sleep a night. I can get 10, 12 hours of sleep a night. Um, but when my alarm goes off, I don't know what it is, but I always have a tune that's going on inside of my heart. I can't sing like Johnny. Maybe one day in heaven. But this side of heaven, I don't believe I can sing like him. But you know what? That's his gift. But I love to worship. And I get up in the morning, and all of a sudden, I've got worship that's happening inside of my spirit. And I know my spirit is communing with God. And as a result, God is, is causing things to be able to go deeper on the inside of me. Why? Because he wants everything that I am. Because he wants his full plan to be experienced inside of my life. The same with you. You see, when we only give him a portion of who we are, we're choosing to leave the other portion on the table when God says, listen, if you'll just give it all to me, then all of a sudden I can begin to show myself strong on your behalf. Well, one of the things that God wants from us is he wants all of our attention. He wants all of our time. He wants all of our talents. He wants us all. How many of you are ready to give all to him today? Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, he talks about God being our provider. And it says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for he is the one who gives you the power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant with you that he swore to his fathers in that day. You know, it's God that gives us the ability to prosper. He's the one that gives us the ability to be able to get wealth. You know, there's some things that we can do. I have very talented people under the sound of my voice that have the ability to be able to, to do things very, very well. But let me ask you something. With all of your gifts and all of your talents, the, the ability that you have to do things well, what would it be like if you took those gifts, those talents, those abilities, and allowed God to supercharge them? Allowed him to be able to move in ways that you can't even begin to imagine. You see, one of the things that the Spirit of God is always wanting to do is he's wanting to get our full attention so that we give him our full heart. That's why in, in, in the book of Malachi, it talks about the importance of giving God our full heart. It, it's talking about giving God all that we have. And one of the things that he wants us to be able to give him is also our tithe and our offering. Now, listen, I know, I know I'm going to talk a little bit about tithe and offering, but let me just tell you, you know what tithe and offering really comes down to? Lordship. It comes down to being able to say, God, all that I have is yours. It's not about the amount of money that you put in the plate, even though it's about the money that you put into the plate. And aren't you thankful that we received the offering before I preached this message? Turn to your neighbor and say, ooh, praise the Lord, somebody. <laughs> but really what it comes down to is allowing the fullness of who you are to be able to manifest itself, to be all that God's called you to be. But the enemy of our soul wants us to be able to hold on to certain areas and be able to say, you can trust God with this. I can trust God with my wife, but I can't trust God with this. I can trust God with my, my kids, but I can't trust him with this. And the areas that we hold back are the areas that we don't give him access to be able to move in. And I don't know about you, but I need God to be able to move in my finances. I, I don't know about you, but I need God to be able to move in our businesses. I need God to be able to show himself strong. And so if I want God to move into those areas, I've got to give God access into those areas. And when we give God access into those areas, we choose to be able to say, Father, you can move according to your will and not my will. So here he turns in the book of Malachi, and he's talking about some things, and, and, and he says that, that it, when you bring your whole tithe into the storehouse, that all of a sudden he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you that you can't even contain. What does that look like? That's amazing. That's amazing, beyond what you can ever contain. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the, the vine um, fail to bear fruit for in your field, says the Lord of the hosts. And all the nations will call you blessed, for you have chose to be able to delight in the Lord of the hosts. You know what's amazing is that God wants us to come to a place where all of a sudden we can choose to be able to trust him. We can choose to be able to say, God, all that I have is yours. Now, you know what's amazing is that I don't know who gives what, but the fact of the matter is, is this. God does. My responsibility is to equip you to be able to do whatever he's called you to do. And all I'm telling you is that, you know what, we may have some folks under the sound of my voice that God wants to be able to bless in a great kind of way. Am I talking to anybody? Do any of you feel like that, that you know what, that you've got favor inside of your life and that God wants to bless you in a big way? All right, I got a couple of you. Guess what? I'm standing with a couple of you. And I'm praying that the rest of y'all would be able to turn and say, oh, yes, pastor, I'm going to grab hold of that. Because, you know, the Bible, the Bible just said that, you know, he gives us the ability to be able to get wealth. He gives us the ability to be able to prosper, and not only prosper, but he gives us the ability that all the nations will call us blessed. 
You see, I believe the Apostle Paul picked up on this when he said, I has not seen nor has ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God will do for those that love him. And the Bible says that the world will know us by the love we show one to another. So, so how do we grow in that love? We grow in the knowledge of God, and we choose to put God first in every area of our lives. Money is only one aspect of it. You know, it doesn't do me any good to be able to, to choose to be able to, 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 to tithe and to be able to give offerings. And, and, you know, when we have missionaries like the one from Peru that was just here a couple weeks ago, you know, we make sacrificial giving to be able to give and for me to be able to violate other areas of my life, like not choosing to honor my wife. You know, the Bible says, you know, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. How many of you know that when I choose to honor her and I choose to love her like Christ loved the church, that sacrificial love, how many of you know that there's peace inside of my home? How many of you know that, that you know that there's, there's tranquility there? Because I've chosen to be able to take the, the totality of God's word. I've chosen to be able to take from, from Genesis to Revelation and apply it to my life and not pick and choose. It's, it's not a smorgasbord. It's not a cafeteria. I can't choose to say, well, God, I believe you for the blessing of God to come into my life. But I choose to be able to say, well, tithing? Nah, I don't believe in that. And, you know, I can't pick and choose. I've got to choose to be able to say, God, the totality of your word is a part of who I am. And what you want to be able to do in me and do through me. See, God wants us to be able to learn to be able to grow in kingdom principles. You know, the Bible gives us direction in so many different areas of our lives. I mean, you know, the Bible talks about 272 times to believe. 272 times the Bible tells us to believe. 371 times the Bible tells us to pray. How many of you know that we need to learn to be able to pray? 365 times the Bible tells us to fear not. 714 times the Bible tells us to love, but the Bible tells us 2,161 times to give. You see, giving is a part of the kingdom. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. You see, you'll never be more like God than when you choose to be able to give. And I'm not just talking finances anymore. You know, last week we were so blessed to be able to partner with FCA and share your heart and, and, and had volunteers that were out when we blessed 200 plus families with turkeys and Thanksgiving meals. You know what that was? That was, that was, that was, that was love in action. And, you know, we were choosing to give of our Sunday afternoon to be able to bless somebody. It, it amazed me. And, and I don't want to spotlight in, uh, any individual, but there were people that were greatly touched. There was four boys that had, I believe all four gave their lives to the Lord, and I, and I walked up to them, and they were just so overwhelmed what God was doing. And I said, hey, you know who this is? I had no idea who he was. But the fact of the matter is, he, they knew who he was. And then they knew that there was a God that, that, that came into that car and began to reach them. You see, I believe that, you know, well, as people, we have to learn to be able to understand that inside of the kingdom of God, one of the principles in God's kingdom is the principle of giving. And not just of our resources. Resources is only one aspect of it. How many of you know that if you want to have any successful relationship, you got to choose to give in that relationship? You can't be, always be a taker. Turn to your neighbor and say, stop taking. we got to choose to be givers. we got to choose to be able to give. You know what I realize is I can't outgive her. The more I give to her, the more she gives back to me. But you know what I realize is, is, is you know, I'm like the thermostat that's over there on that wall. And you all are, are, are very comfortable right now. Some of you all may be cold. I don't know what it is. You can never please everybody with a thermostat. I got people that are cold, people that are hot. But that thermostat sets the atmosphere inside of the house or inside of the building. But inside of my house, I'm the thermostat. And so when I choose to be able to give, guess what? She gives back. But if I choose to be a little self-centered, a little self-righteous, a little stingy, a little me, 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 me. Is that how you warm up in the morning? Me, 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 me. That's the vocal coach over there. How do you do it, Johnny? Come over here. Come 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 here. Tell them how you warm up in the morning. How are we? Long clap. I don't have to be the smartest guy in the room. I just need to know who he is. But you know what he's doing? He's protecting his gift. Because the notes that he hits up here on the platform, if he doesn't choose to be able to warm up before he comes up here, he can mess up his vocal cords. But he chooses to be able to exercise that gift, and as a result, when he comes up, you know, he's ready. And guess what? Everybody, what's that? Oh, did you really? 
Oh, you want to come back and do that do re me? That's what I was talking about. Me, 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 me. That's all I got, baby. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Look right here because they're watching you all over the internet. La, 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 Put your hands together. Thank you, Johnny. But inside of God's kingdom, we can't be givers if it's all about me. We can't be givers if it's all about the me, the my, and the I. You see, we've got to come to a place where we realize inside of God's kingdom, he wants us all to be givers. Not just financial givers, but he wants us to be giving of our time and our talent. Every one of us are blessed every single Sunday. My mom was, was, was in rehab last Sunday, and she's watching online. We close out the service with Johnny singing as well with our soul. All of a sudden, she's got the video going inside of her room and walks nurses. And all of a sudden, the nurses hear him singing. And so all the way down in Palm City, Florida, they had nurses with their hands raised in, in, the, in the rehab center being blessed because the brother turned and, and, and chose to be able to use his gift to help all of us come into the, into the kingdom of God and to be able to come into the presence of God. You know, what will take place inside of this building when we all choose to be able to say, God, I'm going to be a giver? Not just of my resources, I'm a giver of my talent. Because every one of us have talents. How many of you got an umbrella run out to you today? All right, those of you that didn't, you came late. That's why you didn't get an umbrella. Because it's raining in Tallahassee. But you know, the, the fact of the matter is, we had people that were running umbrellas out to cars to help people come in so they wouldn't get wet when they're coming into the building. They're using their gifts. And guess what? Everybody was so appreciative when all of a sudden their car pulled up and there's an umbrella waiting for them so they don't have to be able to get their hair due all wet coming into the house of the Lord. All right, let me see if I can pull this thing to a close. So giving makes us more like God. He's the ultimate giver. We're made in his image. We're made in his likeness. And when we choose to be people that are giving, when we choose to be able to say, God, you can trust me with, with my resources. You can trust me with, your, with the talents. You can trust me with every aspect of my life. I will choose to be able to give into your kingdom just like you chose to be able to give towards me. It makes us more like God. You know, the enemy is a taker. He wants us to be able to stop growing in our faith. I'm so proud. You know what? We got real Christians. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are a real Christian. People online ain't got a clue. Well, maybe some of them do because they got up this morning and they realized it was storming in Tallahassee. But here we got a full building because you chose to be able to come regardless of if it was going to rain or not. You chose to be able to come into the house of the Lord because you realized there was something that God wanted to be able to give you today. There was an area inside of your life that he wanted to fortify. There were some things inside of your life he wanted to deliver you from. I, I don't know about you, but I know that there were people in this building today that during worship, you had tears streaming down your face. You know what was happening? You were believing a lie, and all of a sudden, God said, I'm going to deliver you from that lie. The presence of God overwhelmed you. When the presence of God overwhelmed you, all of a sudden, you were exposed to truth, and you realized the devil is a liar, and he's a taker. And he wants to be able to get us to be able to promote ourselves and promote selfishness and, and be self-absorbed. But we were created in the image of God, and God wants us to be givers. Turn to your neighbor and say, be a giver. Giving strengthens our faith. Giving is the thing that causes our faith to be able to be stronger with God. And giving is the thing that, that causes us to be able to realize that we are made in his image. Luke chapter 6, it says, Give and it shall be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure that you use, it will be measured to you. You see, giving is a part of the kingdom of God. Number three, giving is an investment for our eternity. Come and help me, Johnny. Giving is an investment for our eternity. You know, it's important for us to understand that the vision and the focus of this church is not only to be able to have multiple services in this building, but the vision of this church is to plant multiple churches. You know, I'm so proud. Some of you are, know Mike and Debbie Tossis that are over in Louisiana right now. They, we, we, they were sent out back in, in August, and they're pastoring a phenomenal church right outside of Baton Rouge. God is doing great things with them. Our goal is to be able to plant churches. Our goal is to equip you. Our goal is to be able to expand the kingdom of God. Because at the end of the day, it's not about us. It's not about me, 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 me. 
They never invite me to the praise team. It's about him. It's about choosing to allow the giving nature of God to be upon us and to be kingdom focused. So, so you know, we're, we're, our vision is to be able to plant churches, to support missionaries. You know, we give a large amount of money to missions. 27% last year went to missions. I believe this year, with several missionaries that we've picked up, that we're going to continually increase. But it's expanding the kingdom. Our, our vision is to be able to strengthen families, to train mature leaders, and to equip you for the purpose that God's got for your life. It's all about understanding the nature of God, and it all comes through giving. Choosing to give of yourself, your talents, your treasures. I don't know if you're volunteering currently, but you need to be. Because you have gifts on the inside of you that others so desperately need. You know, how many of you know that the person next to you may not understand how wonderful you are? Turn to your neighbor and say, you don't even know who I am. But you know what I recognize too is that giving blesses me in return. It blesses me in return. When I, when I give to be able to help somebody else, it blows me away how the kingdom of God operates. So there was a time and a season inside of our lives when we didn't have two nickels to rub together. I was going to Bible college. Kelly was working a job. I was throwing a paper route. You ever throw a paper route? You guys don't even know what a newspaper is anymore. Did everything digitally. But before I would go to, to, to off to college, I would throw 400 plus papers in the morning. I had to be back to the house by 6.30 in the morning, shower, out of the house by 7, drove 90, 90 miles one way to Bible college. And there was a time in our season in our lives where, where we had a lot of love, but we didn't have a lot of groceries. As a matter of fact, we didn't have a lot of money to rub together. And for the life of me, I don't understand how this happened, but we had a couple come over and visit us. I don't remember him ever going into the refrigerator. I don't remember him ever even getting a glass of water because that's all we had was water whatever came out of the tap. We didn't have any of these real fancy bottles of water that's, you know, from different places. They left that evening and about an hour later there was a knock at the door. Our whole front stoop was full of groceries because nobody standing there. And, and I knew it was bad news. You see, that was a tremendous blessing to us. And later on, I talked to them about it. And yes, it was them. And it was a blessing to them. Because you know, it's better to be able to give than it is to be able to receive. When you can help somebody else out in time of need, all of a sudden now you begin to recognize that, you know, that's the kingdom. That's how God is. God looked down from heaven and he said, these people so desperately need us. And you know, all the way from the beginning in the garden, God chose to be able to make a way because he understood that we were going to need it. So when you choose to be able to give, it's, it's blessing not only them, but it also blesses you in return. You see, I believe that there's four attitudes that we need to be able to have when we give. As, as a matter of fact, the, the first is give willingly. Can we just put our hands together for our Connect team that were out in that parking lot today in the rain bringing you umbrellas? Listen. They chose to give willingly. They chose to be able to show up early to be able to make sure they could run an umbrella out to you. Another attitude is give thankfully. You see, when we have a, a heart that's full of gratitude, we're willing to do whatever is needed to be able to help somebody else out in time of need. And you know what's so beautiful? It's almost like a, a beautiful orchestra. I don't know about you, but I sat on the front row this morning and just how balanced the voices are, the instruments. Put your hands together for our media team. Probably the greatest, it's the, it's the most thankless position. See, we don't ever recognize when it's right, but we recognize when it's wrong. We recognize when we got feedback in the microphone. Well, every one of us were blessed today because they showed up and they gave. They gave of their gifts and their talents. You know, part of our media team is up on the platform. Josh Sellers, when you see him over there, you think he's returning texts. He's not. He's on his iPad and he's dialing things in because he recognizes we need this and we need that. <laughs> so, 
See, every one of us have talents. Every one of us have something to give. Our resources is only one aspect of it. But when we choose to meet people that give, guess what? We're all blessed as a result of it. Let me give you a couple more. Give thankfully. Psalms 116 says, how can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? We repay him through gratitude. We repay him through thanksgiving. I thank him every day for this congregation. I thank him every day for my family. I thank him every day for what he's doing inside of me. I, I, I could have never imagined that he would have taken something like a blessing of somebody paying for me to go to Israel many years ago. And out of that came a book. Out of that came many tours that I've conducted. Out of that has come churches from all over the nation that want to go to Israel with me. I could have never imagined that he could have used something of that caliber. But when you turn and you take whatever you have in your hand and you give it back to God, guess what he takes and he creates something beautiful. Thanksgiving. Another is give joyfully. 2 Corinthians 9, 7, it says, for God loves a cheerful giver. You know, that word cheerful in the Greek is the word hilarious. God loves somebody that loves to give hilariously. You know what I've learned a long time ago is that, listen, there's a lot of great things that are taking place. Share Your Heart is blessing a lot of people inside of our community. Some of you may be here today as a result of Share Your Heart helping you in a time of need. But you know what I recognize is that I, I need to get seed into the ground. Because you know what? Our giving is seed. Not just financial seed, but giving of our time is seed. Giving of our talents is seed. And when we get it into the ground, all of a sudden, all of a sudden something beautiful prospers. So when I see like an FCA that's, that's reaching kids all throughout the panhandle. Huddles in every middle school and high school. They just had a thing um, two weeks ago called Field of Faith over in Perry. In which middle schools and high school came out. I, I, I think there were 17 kids that gave their life to the Christ that night. You know, I don't know about you, but I want to be able to give. I want to be able to have seed in that. And guess what? You do. Because when you give here, that money goes to FCA. That money goes to share your heart. But more than just our, our treasures, we've got to learn to be able to give joyfully in the overflow of our heart. Lastly, you need to give expectantly. You need to be able to, to choose to place a demand upon a seed that you have. If you give financially, it's just like a farmer, when a farmer plants a crop, guess what he expects to produce? A crop. So when you give, you choose to be able to plant and you plant expectantly. You're not giving to give, but you're choosing to be able to say, God, I feel that you're telling me to be able to give towards this missionary. So, Father, I'm believing that that missionary is going to be fruitful. I'm believing, God, that salvation is going to be able to break forth. I'm believing, God, that, that we're going to be able to see uh, many miracles come through the hands of that missionary. And you choose to be able to give expectantly. And you choose to be able to say, Father, your word says that there is a, a, a return, a, th a 30, 60, 100-fold return. What is that? That's giving expectantly. And when we choose to be able to give, we choose to be able to place it back in the hands of Almighty God. Because I don't know about you, but when I can take what I have and place it in His hands, that's when something miraculous happens. You remember when all of a sudden Jesus turned and He had the, the multitudes, He had 5,000 people? And he turned and the disciples came to him and said, Master, please release them so they can go get something to eat. And he turns to him and says, but what do you have? He says, man, I only got a few measly fish and a couple loaves. And he said, that'll do. He took that and he held it up to Almighty God. And he said, God, I thank you. And he blessed it. He gave it into the hands of God and he fed the multitudes. Theologians will tell you that there probably was over 20,000 people there because all they counted was the men, 5,000 men. Women and children also ate that day, and there was 12 baskets of leftovers. Because when we take something and we lift it up to Almighty God and we trust Him, that's when great things happen. We've got to be able to give expectantly. Turn to your neighbor and say, give expectantly. Let me get you to stand to your feet. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. It says, but just as you excel in everything, excel in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in your love for us, see that you also excel in the grace of giving. Choose to be people that give. Choose to be a giver and not a taker. 
choose to be able to say, you can count on me to be able to enable my gifts, my talents to be used in concert to enable something beautiful to be able to take place. Let me get you to grab the hand of the person that you're next to. How many of you know that you're holding the hand of a master's original? There's nobody else like them. There's nobody else like them. As a matter of fact, your heavenly father, when he looks down from heaven, he smiles because you're the apple of his eye. He loves you with an everlasting love. See, giving is a principle inside of the kingdom. And what can happen inside of our city when this crowd chooses to be able to give? I believe that we could turn this city upside down with the love of God. Now, there's a lot of people today because it's raining outside and because it's a little dreary, they're a little bit gloomy, maybe a little depressed, maybe a little overwhelmed, not knowing what's going to happen next week, next month. How many of you know that the winter solstice happens around Christmas time? It's the darkest day of the year, and we're heading into that. You know, for some people, they'll experience great depression around Christmas. But I believe God wants us, like the Feast of Dedication, the Festival of Lights, to let our light shine. I believe God wants us to be able to show his love to people that are around us. And it happens by us choosing to be able to say, God, you can trust me because I'll give of my time. I may be a little delayed because a woman on aisle 13 at Walmart needs someone to be able to touch heaven on her behalf. And I'm willing to be able to stop my crazy day and pray for her. You see, that's what he's talking about. You know, some of you will give here. Some of you will give at work. Some of you will give in our community. Some give through FCA. Some give through Share Your Heart. We have many chaplains that have been trained up, raised up here that work for Share Your Heart, that, that are deployed to be able to help family in time of need. You see, it's the language of heaven. It's called giving. God showed it when he gave his son, and we give it back when we give of ourselves. Father, we thank you today. God, I thank you for the greatness of who you are. Father, I ask, God, that you would teach us, Father, how to manifest your kingdom, Father, here on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we know that you're a great big God and that you're a giving God. So, Father, Lord, I pray for the person whose hands I hold. And I ask, God, that you would release the gifts on the inside of them. Those gifts, Father, Lord, to bless, Father, Lord, the, the, not only this body, but, Father, Lord, the body at large inside of our region. That the fame of your name would be spread, that people would have hope. Because their hope will not be found in, in what happens in, through politicians. Their hope will only be found in the one who brings hope. The Prince of Peace. Emmanuel, the God that's with us. Father, teach us how to be givers. Teach us, Father Lord, how to give of our time, our talents, and our treasures. Teach us, Father Lord, how to be your ambassadors here on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll be back to two services next Sunday. Listen to me. If you need prayer for any area of your life, I want you to come down front. We have, we have some incredible altar workers that will touch heaven on your behalf. Please do not leave here if you need someone to agree with you in prayer. Other than that, God bless you. Have a wonderful day.